My dearest Sil, I hope this message finds you well. If I understand correctly, you are now in Seaview and have encountered some spiritual phenomena. It appears that Councilwoman Pelbori was inadvertently responsible for trying to perform a protection ritual. But in the display of hack amateurism, misrepresenting the sigils and changing the ritual to one that both summons and intensifies. Oh, how would I have loved to have been there with you, to see the circle for myself and feel the intensity of the spiral lines. Do you remember if the sigils were in Abyssal or perhaps Infernal? Were they written in a particular substance? And what was the diameter of the circle? But never mind these questions, we can save this for another time. I have taken a look at the maps that you sent and although the last one perplexes me and I'd need more time to decipher it, I gather some information about Moonshadow Island. Firstly, the only landing place appears to be a small rocky beach on the island's southern side. The rest of the island is surrounded by razor-sharp, jagged rock. There are rumors of smuggling tunnels and other secret paths into the island. Still, I would advise against searching for those when there is a perfectly suitable landing point, which coincidentally is near where Poppy's map points the other fragment of the jewel. There are a few other points I would loathe to leave you without. Moonshadow is completely inhospitable by the research I have performed. Storms frequent the island. The roots, the fruit, and the herbs are edible, but they are completely unappetizing. The island is also home to dangerous creatures, insects, undead, and criminals who don't want to be found. Please take care, my dear friend, Sil. Please send me another message as soon as possible so that I know that you are still alive. As a postscript, and without saying my farewells, I will say that Rodan is doing well, but there is something strange about him and time I will tell you about it, well, another time. Sincerely yours, your friend, Prakta. Welcome back to the 25 North Podcast. Guess what? We're episode 10. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. 10 episodes into season 2. Dude, babe, you know what this means? We've gotten 10 episodes with our characters dying. A new Woo! record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no characters dying so far. Yeah, we've been doing calls, good. But... Knock on wood, knock on wood, knock on wood. Why are you saying this? Yeah. Why are you You've saying all cursed this? us. I'm You've a character it. mill. It's fine. It's fine. Nobody likes Zaba anyways. What the fuck? <laughs> Especially not me. I don't no! like Zaba at all. Corey, <laughs> I love Zaba. Zaba's great. Zaba's I love all great. the characters. I love... Yeah, I'm trying to I, look I, back. I hate Zaba too. 
I hate Sabo. Sabo is not my favorite. <laughs> if, I, if I admit my love for him, then he will die. <laughs> to be fair, to kill be your fair, darlings. We w it took thirty-five episodes before Rizzer died. That's true. How That's many? True, but he did. Uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's if see. Even, How many for Valmo? How much for Valmo's original death is the real question. It was six. It was six. Yeah. All right. That seemed about ba, right. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, oh. It was six. And then, um... No, no, it wasn't six. It was more than that. It was... It was 14. seven. It was 14 episodes for Balmo. Okay. Wow. Until yeah. she got oozed? Until she got oozed. Wow. Okay. Balmo had a good run, I guess. <laughs> I just remember being the meat dummy pushed through doors by Syl and her... Uh, you offered. <laughs> wow. Her immediate downfall to an ooze. <laughs> That's Respect what Balmo. are for, is to sacrifice themselves for others. Yeah, exactly. Nudge, nudge. Especially a, especially a cleric of Abadar. <laughs> you would have healed us for free. You could have gone in the back. It's not how it works. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah. Ten episodes in. How are you all feeling about this so far? You, I'm feeling great. You came to this new city. <laughs> and, yeah, let's, let's check in with the characters. How are the characters feeling? They came into this new city. They... They... Don't think anybody was expecting a ghost hunt. So, and you I just encountered. A ghost you just encountered one of the council members is responsible for actually agitating all the spirits in town. You know, they were trying to help. They were trying to be a good person, but didn't do such a good job at it. So, like, what's going through all the characters' minds right now? I think Vesuviak is definitely annoyed. Definitely feels like if you're going to be doing a ritual like this, especially with the intention to protect someone, you need to know exactly what you are doing and have everything correct. And be I, I guess it's just because he would figure that if a part of a protection spell is wrong, that's a flaw and it can be exploited. And so he's just more annoyed at the councilwoman's carelessness in his eyes with that preparation of that ritual. Y'all want to go before me? Because I'm, I'm willing to say things that I've been thinking as Timothy, but if y'all want to go before me, go for it. <laughs> ramble, Timothy, ramble. Ramble, Timothy, ramble. Time for my corkboard to come out. I mean, all right. Like, this is, like, his first time really being with a party in God's know how long he... And while it's like, yeah, it's ghost hunt stuff like that, he was feeling really excited about the adventure and, like, you know, like, actually having a job, being able to do some things, working for once. But it's, like, hard for him to come back after that thing plunged into his mind. And he's trying to come back from that. And I think right now how he is feeling is he's hearing all the like things Zaba is saying about Timothy. He's like, he is hearing what everyone says about him. And he's just like secretly holding on to information. I think at this moment in time, he, he likes his party mates. He just doesn't know if they like him back. Yeah, sort of. Second guessing and questioning, and yeah, needs that reassurance a little bit. No, not is even Timothy, like second guessing. Is Timothy just... dealing with a little imposter syndrome? Oh, best or thing, is he's it been just... dealing with imposter syndrome since he's been bored, but like that's besides the point. <laughs> gotcha. He's uh just trying to figure out his place in this quirky group of this quirky group, yeah, in, in general. Because, like, he can see what everybody else can do, and he's just like, spell. <laughs> you know? That, that's at least, I think, what he's feeling right now. Yeah, I think Sil is equally frustrated with, between Zaba and this ghosty thing, 
alluding to their past, ready to get away from the meddlesome council people and the stupid prince and all of these ghosts and get on with the, the main mission. And, you know, this group seems like they're really good at standing in the way and haven't killed anybody innocent yet, mostly. So that's good. Zob is doing great. He is crushing <laughs> his new role with this group. Nothing stands before him. He's taking orders like he knows he should, even though it's kind of against his nature from Sill. It's a little strange for him to not, like, jump off the ship and start burning buildings and take the loot. So he's really having to, like, control himself. But he feels like he's really just forming a great bond with everybody. Maybe not so much with Vesuviak, but they've reached kind of an understanding. You know, he's, uh, yeah, he's feeling great. You know, he's the protector. He's, uh, de dispatching people that may cause harm to, uh, his leader, Sill. Yeah. Vesu uh, not Vesuviak. Zaba's feeling great. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, last we left off, y'all did handle Counselor Pelbori. We did. And managed to calm her down and make her realize what was actually happening. And you, you grabbed her and you are on your way to take her back to the city council, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, yeah, we you fought... You, you realized a couple things in the private room that she had rented out. So you recognized the fact that there was... She had written down some notes because she started getting these visions in her dreams of mountain-sized crustaceans rising from the earth. Four phrases repeated throughout her her notes and her drawings of those visions the phrases being spirits of the earth will consume the living and cast down their towns the behemoth shivers beware the shivering behemoth what was cast beneath the stars shall rise up once more the diamond is the key but only once it is made whole so that is what happens and you're on your way back to the council. All right. Yeah. Zaba's not having any particular thoughts on what he's witnessed. They've caught the bad guy. Unless <laughs> somebody says otherwise, in which case we'll go hunt them down. You know, he's a good I mean, guy. He's not here to hurt, you know, other good people. Unless he has to. Yeah, I mean, the councilwoman's a good person. She just made a mistake. We'll escort her back and then get on with our business. You want me to, like, put her in a sack and carry the sack or something? Or are we going to well, let her just walk? No, we can necessary. have her just walk. Hey, just checking. Jeez. Why would you? I don't want to know. Oh my god. And like Timothy's just like he I think right now is just taking a sip of his rum filled water skin and You wanna take a ride in you wanna take a ride in the sack? You don't get a little bit of rest? Honestly might take you up on that. I have yeah, had one I hell of extra a headache. Extra large burlap. <laughs> I don't think Timothy's that would just be like water sitting there, it's like you know what? Why the hell not? Fuck it, right? Like, ghosts have happened. Fuck it. Just, you know what? Fuck it. And he just gets in the fucking sack that Zob has. Like, carry away, carry me away, frog demon. Fuck it. Oh, well, yeah, I'll just cinch it up and throw it over my shoulder and carry Timothy. Cool. But Suviak, he's just got to look at this like, I don't think it. All right. Well, I guess it's happening already. I can't hear you. I'm, I'm inside the sack. I'm inside a safety sack. It's fine. A safety I'm imagining. Sack. I'm imagining. <laughs> Timothy's head is poking out of the burlap yeah, exactly. sack, like like one of those uh, chihuahuas that's yeah. in, like the Beverly <laughs> Hills. Like a purse chihuahua. Yeah, like a purse chihuahua. <laughs> 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 
I need- he, he just need- he just needs a second where he's not fucking walking. Stop us and he wanted to carry him? Sure, fuck it! He's, you know, <laughs> just helping out. Vesuviac, you're a bit big, I'm sorry, uh... I hope you understand. <laughs> it's fine, I can walk. <laughs> Alright. So... Good. We're professional. <laughs> Real pro Timothy Real was professional. like, you, Timothy was like, you hired me on. When did you expect professional from me? I mean, he already, we all have he already had the sack ready. Might as well put it to use. <laughs> yeah, right. Like something had to go in there. <laughs> it was either going to be the counselor or Timothy. Yeah, exactly. This, this was probably the more amicable road. <laughs> So yeah, I guess we make our way to oh the yeah, council hall. Let Timothy out before we get to the council hall. Yeah, please, hall. if you don't Maybe. mind, though. <laughs> Save face a little bit. <laughs> it's all right. I have an idea. I okay. actually I don't like being the sack anymore. Wait a minute, stop saying that. Nope, nope. <laughs> <don't> like this. <laughs> get down. <laughs> I'll shove Timothy down and tie that um, bag off. Well. <laughs> This is not the first time I've been in this situation. It won't be the last. Yeah. What do you mean? Is, this isn't the first time. Is is a cunning ploy? Just be quiet. <laughs> we don't I, need any ploys. We don't expected. need any ploys. Is is a uh, just stroke of genius? Trust me, I've been through this before. Timothy in the back of his head, like, what did I sign myself up to? I wanted to do this as a goof. This no longer you... turned to goofs. I give you a special gift if you cooperate. Something very special. Much to you know your what? liking. I... I'm morbid it, enough to figure out what the fuck it is. Alright, I'll cooperate. It, it, it comes in bottle. I know you like bottles. Alright, I'm interested. I'm interested. You said bottle. I don't need anything else. I'm interested. Alright, I'll just be quiet. And okay. still as mouse. <laughs> still as a mouse. <laughs> All right, you you you, re you reach the high chambers, and I mean it's probably late morning, around lunchtime. You went there, you went to the Wave Watcher Inn first thing in the morning. So mm -hmm. again, the guard is the guard's there, and he's like, "Oh, oh, I wasn't expecting you so early." I mean. What can we do you for? Uh, we brought the councilwoman here. We're gonna drop her oh, off. Oh, quick. I'm sorry, Councillor Pelbori. It's is everything okay? And she's just completely despondent. It's like, you know, she has that glazed over look on her face, just completely disasso dissociated from reality. It's just like, I I don't know what happened. I I I. I didn't didn't mean to. I you know just completely gone. Oh y y yeah yeah. I mean, sh sure. Go on. Go right in. Go 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 on right in. And he opens the the door to the council chambers. And again, the three Orpok counselors are sitting up there. It's like, and the Hugh Jackman one's like, oh yeah. I didn't mean. Oh, Councilor Pelbori. Didn't welcome back. Hi. Just what what's going what's going on here? So what's what's happening? Saba would like to take the opportunity of this opening conversation to just gently set the burlap sack kind of off to the side by the doorway, but like if there's like a pillar or something you can partially obscure it with. He just wants to leave it on the ground. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Timothy stays quiet. Uh, still a little distracted by this, but we'll <laughs> redirect attention back to the councilman. Uh, it turns out the councilwoman here maybe made a mistake and, y you know, kind of channeled some bad energy. But she's okay now. Uh, you know, everything's fine. There might be an evil, you know, vortex of occult power or something in your town, but it's just fine. I'm sure you guys can deal oh. with it. Oh, an evil cortex of a... Oh my goodness, that's a... Oof, -da, that's a big... That's a big pickle there. Counselor Palbori, are you okay? 
And again, just no response. I just, I, I don't know what I think, uh, she doesn't look quite right in the head, you know. I just, uh... I mean, Vesuviak looked her over. She's fine, right, Vesuviak? Physically, yes. She was, however, in the center of everything that has been going on. So there is a good probability that she may need some time to mentally recover. Actually, I kind of just thought of this. Can I look at Palbori to see if there's any chance that they may have been possessed? Oh, you would know that there's there's not any kind of possession. This is all just like um, paranoia Big, and delusion. Okay. Big oopsie yeah, poopsie. Just very mentally shaken right now. Physically, they're fine. They just may need some time to recover. Oh, that's... um. No, I, I understand. I think that uh, we have just a place. Oh, yeah, don't you worry. Don't you worry now. We um, we have just a place where uh, Counselor Pelbori will get very well taken care of. There's a, there is a recovery center here in Seaview that, that can handle folks that are dealing with some mental health issues that are just like this. She will receive all the help that she needs and... Uh, we will give her the treatment, and she can learn some plans on how to how to deal with the stresses. Don't you worry. Uh, we could. I. Uh, uh, oh, oh J- J- John. Hey, yeah, yeah. You just if you could take Counselor Pelvori and hey, take her down to the hospital and take her to the health center. She's she, we can. We have some issues to start to take care of. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, and, um... Were you able to take care of the... the tasks? I... I mean... We took care of the... cartographer, and we went to the inn. We didn't, you know, find your friend, but... Oh, and how is my cousin? Alasha. She's fine. Timothy made friends with her. She's not she, here she right now. She is such a lovely soul. She's just a good egg, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get out to the farm, but, you know, you might, all right, you know, check that out. Did you happen to get our maps ready, though, so we can leave? Unfortunately, it's only been uh, one day, and I think I should be able to. If he, they should be done by the end of the day here, so I, I'll, I'll be able to get that to you. I'm, I have the, I have the best and brightest working on it for you. So yeah, by the end of the day, we should be able to get that. So okay, so just the farms left. Interesting. Okay, I'd be. If we could figure out what's going on with the bluebell crops, and that would be a great, great help to us. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess we can do that. Zubak, are you still, uh, whatever, in tune with your god, or whatever you people do? <laughs> yeah, I, I could still, I could still do a few things. Cool. Uh, I guess we can go. Zaba, do you have all your stuff? Do you yeah, leave let's, anything uh, behind? Let's go. Worst case scenario, I have to plow a field for an hour and teach them how to really sow the field, you know. Uh, I'm not such a bad guy, you know. I would happily do this if it means that it gets us off this godforsaken town, but, you know. If you, do, if you don't mind me asking, wasn't there a fourth with you? Uh, he went to go and see the the cartographer. He was quite taken with her, wanting to make sure she was doing okay after the ordeals of, uh, you know, she had a doorway that almost killed me. These spikes came out. There was blood everywhere. Very shocking. And then an unfortunate accident happened, and one of her chairs was destroyed with brutal force. And I think, uh, she oh, just needed no. a bit of rest, and Timothy wanted to go make sure she was doing okay. He's a very good guy, you know. 
Oh no. Oh jeez, Louise, that's just Yeah, I, I I hate to hear that, hun. But you know, if if there's some, some sparks of romance between Alasha and that young Timothy, you know, aid aid love doesn't care about age, you know. Well and uh, you know, he's a he's a good man, you know, could use some firm guidance from a uh, a woman who knows her direction. <laughs> you know, because she makes maps. It's very clever, Saba. Oh, yeah. that, that, that's a good pun. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> that's a good pun. All right, so you guys have good afternoon. We go uh, eradicate the pests at the farm, I guess, or whatever's going wrong there. And uh, then you give us our maps. You make trade with uh, the bird captain guy and the... Uh, Give us what we need, and we get out of your hair. Now everybody wins. Right, Sil? Right? Yeah, I mean, we've got to, you know, go into the forest and everything. But yeah, we'll get out of your hair eventually. You, you really sure you have everything you need, Saba? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Gives you, you a just... very pointed look. <laughs> <laughs> you just have so many weapons. Uh, it's easy to lose one. But okay, here we go. Yeah, you know, I got this hole in my back that's just kind of naturally formed that I put them in, so I'm pretty good. That's... Vesuvia, I can, like, cranes his neck back to see if he can see the hole. <laughs> oh yeah, and you would notice that there's definitely just what appears to be, like, a skin flap that Zaba has Ew. inserted all of his weapons into as if he has a back sheath. Vesuvik just kind of frowns and looks dead ahead, not saying anything, but definitely like having a, I really hope that's not infected. <laughs> <type look. laughs> well, all right, let's get here out of go. here, I guess. Yep. And we all leave. Right. <laughs> oh, Okay, so... Timothy's made his choice. <laughs> it's an interesting idea that got DM'd to me, and I'm going along with it. <laughs> so, Saba's intention is to leave Timothy behind for 10 to 15 minutes to listen to the remaining council people in case they say anything diabolical or intend to put harm on the person we just deposited in their care. In the end of those 15 minutes he's gonna jog back up and uh say he forgot his bag of vegetables and if they fall over or are punctured it will release a rancid smell because he likes them rotten sure. ew <laughs> okay no so absolutely the uh there is no there is no ill intent at a hall from the rest of the from the council folk. So Timothy just mostly did this just for Zaba's fucking peace of mind because he was told this, like whispered to this in the burlap sack, and he was like, I was promised a bottle. Fuck it, I'll do it. If it helps if it helps the man sleep. See hey, it. Timothy, I'll, uh, as I bring him outside and around a corner, I'll open the bag up and go, you learn anything interesting listening to the council people? Dude, it was just tax numbers, and oh my fucking god, I felt like it was 45 minutes in there. Dude, it was nothing. It was nothing. They're the most mm. mundane, boring group of people I've ever met. Don't do that to me ever again. I appreciate it. Hey, hey listen, hey. I like the spy thing. That was fun. But like... You, you did great. Thanks, None, nobody man. else could have done that. You really just, you know what? It may not have been beneficial this time, but maybe next time you'll learn of a secret plot to murder Syl in her sleep and uh, you're the hero. You know, this is something only you can do. And uh, as I promise, here's your reward. And he'll reach into his pouch and he's gonna give Timothy one of the four bottles of old Woody that he acquired previously. Timothy looks at you, looks back at the bottle, looks at you. Where? Where did you find this? Oh, you know, I got I got things. I find things. I make trades. I'm a busy I've guy. I've been Don't looking for this them. bottle since I've gone on these fucking <clears throat> forsaken islands. 
Hey, well, keep doing the good work and maybe we'll find more. You got a deal, Frogman. Hey, you did your job. I give you your reward. <sighs> Timothy has that bottle, or he looks at the bottle, and I think he just lets out a sigh. He's like, <sighs> all right. Now, that's one thing that I needed, I guess, taken care of. And he puts it away. Thank you for giving this to me. Y you probably don't think it means a lot, but this does. Hey, yeah, good job. Let's uh, go kill some worms or whatever's wrong at the farm. Yeah, let's go help with some farmers. Uh, and like Timothy like goes back over to Vesuviak and like, so it's like, hey, how's it going? Hey, did you have fun in your sack? <laughs> I took a really good nap, actually. It was great. Nah, Zaba asked me to spy on them. That's really just what it was. Sure. But hey, I got this, and he like holds up the bottle of old Woody. It's like, Zaba might have more or knows where we can find more, so fuck it. Right? Yeah, I mean, booze is really important, so... No, 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 this isn't just... Sorry. This is not just any booze. This is old Woody. This is... A big fucking deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he it, like he starts like <laughs> You know when kids starts talking about their favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle about I like do. why they're the best and things like that? Timothy does that, but with a bottle of fucking booze. <laughs> and so does what every parent has done in that situation like, and oh, zone it out. Wow. Yeah. Yep. It's like, oh good for you. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Wow. I I can just say Vesuvia is going to take this opportunity to refocus, get his focus point back. <laughs> Whatever's important to you, Timothy. I and thank you. Uh, upon witnessing this effect, Vesuviak now realizes the power he holds over Timothy going forwards. Oh, you he mean realized, Zaba? Yeah, Zaba just realized he picked up a monkey's <laughs> paw in that kitchen <laughs> of control of Timothy Bono. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> and we'll we'll see where that takes us, but he will remember this excitement. If Sil looked, he would she, oh, they yeah. would probably notice uh, a borderline sinister smirk. <laughs> Literally and writing very it down intent in focus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for them to be like, go fetch and throws the bottle like ah! <laughs> I um I found I found the the title to this episode. Yeah. Finding old Woody in the sack. <laughs> oh my god. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are tr tr making the trot and the trek to the Dardis Farms. The Dardis is being one of the most established families on the Bluebell Island. They, they're their farm is one of the most important and is only about two miles outside of town, so it's not that much of a trek. To be quite honest, is what? About a, <clears throat> an hour, hour and a half, depending on how fast you're walking. And this place was marked on Pelboris, or whatever the councilwoman's name, Pelboris map as well, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so it's it's not that far away. And as you start uh, approaching it, you see... I mean, the entire walk there is very pleasant. It's, you know, you see rolling hills of flowers and green. It's, 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 it's a beautiful stroll. Uh, neat rows of bluebell plants that just kind of sprawl over these like acres of tidy farmhouses and barns. I think you like when while we're walking there, you see like Timothy actually looks a lot more relaxed. Kind of like this kind of just reminds him of back home, and so he he just like lets it like a breath, and he's just like, "This is God damn, this is beautiful." <laughs> yeah, I mean. You, you follow the dirt road. It leads yeah. into a small yard between a farmhouse and a barn, both painted white and red. The windows on the farmhouse uh, have these like really cute checkered curtains that are tied open with uh, with ribbon on the ground floor. But strangely, the entire upper floor 
those curtains are closed. Now, the farmhouse has this really wide porch that leads to a screen door that's streaked with blood. And there's no sign whatsoever of any activity throughout the, the, the farmyard. And there's no sound either other than the buzzing of flies. I think we've gotten here too late. Timothy takes out his wand. Something in the back of like his neck, like a weird gut feeling, just kind of sets in. And he's like, "Keep, keep your elements about you guys. I, I don't like this." You had doubts that the farm and the town full of ghosts with crazy spiral on map would not be dangerous. My no, real question I is, who paint of- that? Who painted the house white and gray? It looks stupid. Wait. Drugs don't see the red spectrum very well. <laughs> I was about to say, like, <laughs> wait, you can't... Yeah, you know, it's, uh... just kind of oozes out. It's... You know, it's, you know... It's a color. Let's just I go. Think, okay. I think Vesuviac, before approaching, is going to want to do detect magic. Oh, that's smart. See if he can feel anything in the area here. Do we wanna do we wanna start just doing some exploration activities real quick? Yeah. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. So Vesuviac is going to. Uh, you said detect magic, right? Yeah. All right. So we will add that. That's a good call. So. Throw that on there. And we will do active detect magic. Syl, what would Syl like to do? The one that involves stealth. What's the name of that? Sneak? I think, Scout. yeah, that, is, that would be... Void notice? Is that a thing? Void notice, that's it. Yeah. We're going to activate a void notice. Uh, what does Timothy want to do? Timothy, I think he just wants to do just an investigation check. He wants to vibe check this place. He doesn't like how it feels. Investigate. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And Zaba? I'm just going to keep my eyes open and get ready to kill anything that tries to kill my friends. So I'm just going to take a modified version of the defend action where I don't okay. have a shield. I'm just going to ready my trident. Okay. Okay. I gotta find which one investigation would it be. I'm... Investigate. Um, so I have them all in the party. Oh yes. Uh, sheet now, and you can just ho- hover over the exploration tab, and if you hover over the action itself, it'll do a little pop-up window. I'll tell you exactly how that works during exploration okay. mode. Okay. Cool. So for investigate, you seek out information about your surroundings while traveling at half speed. You Mm. use recall knowledge as a secret check to discover clues about various things you can see and engage with as you journey along. You can use any skill that has recall knowledge while investigate while investigating, but the GM determines whether the skill is relevant to the clues you find. Okay. Got it trying to think then what that skill would be oh mighty GM what do you think would be best fitting for the situation because like I said he's just trying to like I said he's just trying to vibe check this place the sight of blood is not the best he knew the farm was going to have something but blood's not what he expected if that makes sense you know Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and detect I'm just trying to see real quick detect yeah. magic has a range of 30 feet as an emanation Okay, so you're just kind of, like, pulsing in a 30-foot aura. So, okay. So let's see what that looks like. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so, yeah, where's the party headed? So just kind of move your, you can move yourselves on the map. Okay. Probably, what do you think, move up to the building and then along the wall? Yeah, I think same with Timothy. As you're investigating, okay, 30. All right, so still no magic from Vesuviac. 
And Timothy, you can... So yeah, you look through... The... So as the party approaches the house from mm -hmm. this southern side... So if you if the porch is looking to the east mm -hmm. and the front door is also facing east and the um the the party is approaching from the southern side so it would be if you're looking if you're thinking that the house is where the front door is it's to the right of the house mm -hmm. and they they're, they see this window and this is one of them that's actually open now Timothy looks inside, and what you see is kind of concerning. I guess Zaba would see it too, and so would Syl and Vesuviak. So the entire party could see this, and it's all really concerning. Because as you see the... There's an Orpok corpse sprawled on the living room floor just inside the door. And then you also notice a few overstuffed leather chairs in the room. One of which is slashed and spilling stuffing onto the floor. Mm. I swear it wasn't me. He looks to you and he's like, Zava, I know it wasn't you. You're good. Okay, just making sure I know everybody's worried I'm gonna go kill innocent people. <sighs> Timothy like puts it like place like looks at him and like you know what? I've known you long enough. I don't think you're gonna actually do it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. What's 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 the order, Sil? Do you want me to punch a hole through the wall and go in like I... like uh, like uh, Warpock Team Seventeen? Timothy, yeah. make me a blind D twenty check. Okay. Give me a second here. A uh, blind D twenty. I changed. I actually had. Now, Quandry, I can shout him out. Yeah. Made a custom module, just a tiny little module that changes the secret roll or the blind roll to secret roll. Oh, nice. So um, it's per the the actual language in the in the game text, as well yeah. as kind of gets rid of that ableism associated mm -hmm. with blind. Yeah. All right. So, yes, Timothy, you would also know because of this. And and it's just the way that, that the body is laying from your vantage point. And that it looks like the slash on the on the Orpox body. It it looks like it was done with a with a a narrow stick or maybe a whip of some sort. Ooh. Timothy looks when he sees like the wound. I think he like points it out from like from the safety of the window, be like, wait. Uh, and like looks and points it out to you guys, like Hey That looks like it was done by like I don't know, I think a whip or some sort of stick? That can't be right. Hold on. Can Timothy... Can... Can I roll stealth? And try to sneak my way up to there? Just so I can at least see more? To the porch? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I want to... Do you want me to do it to be a private one, or...? Yes, make it, make okay. it blind. Okay. Or a secret check. Yes. I'll make it secret. Baba booey. But yeah, Timothy's gonna start walking up there. I feel like this is a bad idea, but also Timothy's like, hold on, that's not right. Yeah, you're able to successfully make it up through the door. Mm -hmm. And so far, there's been no noise or response or anything. Mm. I don't like this. I don't like this. Oh, Timothy peeks his head around the corner to look at the party. He's like, do you all want me to open the door? Yeah. Okay. We'll move a little closer. Okay. Try to indicate everyone to... Mm -hmm. Well, Vesuviac, maybe wait a minute. Do you <laughs> not 
not the quietest. Fair enough, fair enough. I wanted to try and do a detect magic pulse, but I'll do it once you guys say the coast is clear. Yeah. It's good tactics. So, yeah, okay. so when Zaba snuck up close to the porch, but we will yeah. go ahead and let Timothy take that bullet. Timothy, <laughs> Timothy, I think what he's going to do is, like, try to open up the door, but open it up to where he's, like, Oh, what's the best way to describe this? Like, he's to, like, the side of the door, so if for whatever reason, like, I don't know, an egg trap sprays out at the door, he's not actually at the door itself. He's, like, right next to the side of it. An egg that trap? Makes sense. What? Listen. <laughs> I would never Timothy, do that. Timothy yeah. has his fears for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, the door wasn't trapped. Okay, cool. Timothy <laughs> walks in. Okay, yeah, and so um, in addition to the body, you also see there's uh, two half doors, each of which have the top half open and the bottom mm-hmm. half closed, leading into a spacious kitchen. Oh, boy. And, How? There's, and there's also a set of stairs that go up. Oh, boy. How? How long does the body look like it's been dead? You would need to make a medicine check. Oh, let me look at my medicine. Uh, I have a zero to that. I, I <laughs> yeah, you you don't know much of biology. Yeah, yeah. I know where the bits are that are important. Timothy just looks over this Orpok. I think just like gently moves over it. And he's just trying to look over, trying to figure out what the fuck happened at this place. And I think Timothy just like whispers out to everybody. He's like, hey, I think the downstairs fine. I don't see anything here. Cool. Yeah. Subiak, you want to check yep. the body? I'll go ahead and once I get close to the body, or I guess next to Timothy, this is where I want to do the de- uh, detect magic pulse. Detect magic. Okay. Uh, let me double check here. <laughs> Yeah, you do. You do detect the presence of magic. Okay. Which direction? Let me. You don't know yeah. that. Oh, is that not this edition? Okay. Or height? No, it's third. you need to. It need to be higher level for that. Mm. Let me double check. Because it's a cantrip, so detect magic at this level. It's a thirty-foot emanation. You send out a pulse that registers the presence of magic. You receive no information beyond the presence or absence. You can choose to ignore magic you're fully aware of, such as magic items or ongoing smells of you or and your allies. Detect magic can only uh, you, you detect ma- illusion magic only if the magic's effect has a lower level than the level of your detect magic spell. However, items that have illusion auras but aren't deceptive in appearance, such as invisibility potions, are typically detected as normal. Heightened to third, you learn the school of magic, but we need to be six level or higher for that. Okay. Where's where exactly is the Orpok? It's at your feet. Oh, <laughs> uh, I medicine check him. <laughs> All right, make a medicine check, sir. Does this be a secret one? No, or... you can do this out in the open. Okay, where is, there it is. Yes, that is a success. So that was a four on the die, plus 12, for a 16. I love that expertise. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So yes, you do know that he, he's a, he looks like he's a simple farmhand. He's still gripping a hoe in one hand, uh, almost as if he died in a fight. And the lethal injuries all come from that narrow stick that Timothy was talking about. And upon closer inspection, you also, it looks like there is a strange smell coming from his wounds. Almost smells like Ozone? 
Yeah, it smells like ozone. Where's this? D- does Timothy have the stick? No. No, there's. I I don't know what it is, but something like a stick or a whip, maybe. It smells like ozone. Or this wound here smells like ozone. That could be lightning. Lightning? That. I mean, I've heard more insane. I guess. <sighs> something about this doesn't feel right at all. Does the wound look cauterized? No. No. Oh, I might regret this. Timothy's looking at the upstairs. He's like, I I want to check upstairs. Uh, let me get let me get Sel and Zaba first before you do that, just so yeah, that way we I, can be close by. Yeah. Alright, and I, I round the corner and let them know what's what's going on. Okay. Suppose I think at this in. moment. Yeah. I think at this moment, Zabo will just haul himself up onto the roof. And if he hears things going wrong, he'll just punch through it. If it'll even hold him. He is just shy of 600 pounds. You're, you can, you can move in here. It's fine. So I was looking up the squeeze rules. Yeah, it's just like a minus two. It's not a big deal. No, you're, you're, you're fine. You're fine. It's, it's as long as you can, you don't take any penalties as long as you can like shimmy. You know, I think it's more so in this moment, Zaba wants to break through a window and crawl in that way, um, rather than walk through the door because he's being sneaky. Okay. I get (laughs) you. Gotcha. Yeah. So So it's a, it's a, it's a pincer maneuver. Yeah. He's prepared to catch anybody that tries to flee from the roof. He'll jump on them. So Zabo's gonna break in the roof. We can go up the stairs. Yeah, he's gonna try and climb. If there's like a veranda or a patio on the upper floor, he'll use that and just go through the door on that rather than causing too much damage. You could climb through the po- above the porch. There's also, you also notice there's a fireplace. Like You could try to climb that. He's too big to go in a fireplace. Yeah, he'll just climb up onto the porch and get ready to bust through a window if he needs to. He's enjoying the nice sunny day. Good for him. He's got a bad taste in his mouth about doors. Yeah, so make <laughs> me make me a quick athletics check. Oh yeah, no problem. Just I just don't want you to beef it. Yeah, don't beef it, please. Oh. Oof. So four Sorry. on the die plus thirteen, you're fine. And let me actually move you real quick because there is a window on the second floor. Wee! <laughs> yeah, that was quite a journey. Right there. That. So you notice there's a window, but again, the curtains are drawn closed. So. Yeah, that's fine. He'll uh, wait until he has line of sight from his allies entering upstairs. Okay. Okay. Yet now the rest be... of you inside yeah. there. What are you doing in this living room? I mean, Timothy's. I think looking over all the knickknacks and stuff like that. The who's it's the what's it's galore. <laughs> <laughs> we just watched the live action uh, Little Mermaid yesterday. Oh hell yeah! I think yeah. So if you're gonna look and search, mm-hmm. give me some secret perception checks. All right, I definitely want to be in on this. Yeah. I always forget where it is. Yeah, I just go off of my sheet where it has it, like, it's an with the hit points. Yeah. Under the initiative stuff. Syl, are you are you rolling as well? No, Syl is kind of standing in the doorway trying to keep an eye on both halves of the party. Valid. Um, well, I yeah. mean, Zaba's above... I- an yeah. ear on Zaba, an eye on Timothy. And <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Timothy, you don't... Z- Vesuviak, you don't notice anything. Timothy, while you're searching, I mean, there's just... It's your usual, you know... Farm knickknacks. Farm Little Little knick-knacks. tchotchkes. Exactly. But one thing does stand out to you. Oh. You notice a partial bare footprint, like the partial footprint of what looks like a right 
foot, like a bare right foot, like the, the partial, that is tracking blood upstairs. Timothy looks at that, points it out to Vesuviac. It's like, bears are a common thing on these islands. No, 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 not not a bear. Like, bear as in B-A-R-E. Oh, okay. So like like an a actual, bear like, foot. Like a bear foot, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't think bears are supposed to be here. That's a little weird. And I was like, oh, no, okay. Timothy points that out and looks to Vesuviac. It's like, I think we might have something upstairs. And Timothy, yeah, no, Timothy now at this point is like, okay. Wand, what, or implement in one hand, star knife in the other hand, man, because he's not liking this. The more he's going through this, the more he's not liking this, he's going to go upstairs. Quick question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do I know how old the body was? Like, did I get a sense of how long it's been dead? No. No, not, not with that check. Okay. Okay. Uh, I yeah. think Vesuviax is just gonna motion to Sill and uh, wait at the bottom of the stairs until he gets a call out that everything is either good or bad. Hey, hold, hold on! Don't move! Too, don't move too much, oh, yeah. Lunar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'll no, stay you're, there. You're good. All right. So yeah. creeping after Timothy. Yep. Hey, bestie. How's it going? <laughs> you can you can move on to that stairs up icon. Hmm. Okay. Oh, good. Just a hallway. It is just a hallway. I'll um, motion yeah, to Vesuviac here. to please come up quietly if possible. Vesuviac is just going to walk up the stairs. Kunk, kunk, kunk. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess Timothy can lead since this is something he's a lot more interested in. Yeah. Since so he was the first one up. You make it upstairs and you see just a hallway mm-hmm. and a. S- it's kind of like a tea hallway. It just goes straight north south, with two pair or two doors that are mm-hmm. east facing, and then there's at the there's a T intersection with another hallway that looks like it goes west. So I was on the east. We should let him in before we yeah go down that hall. Timothy's gonna start walking, I guess. This we can also see down the hallway. I'm trying to see where Zava, or like the window would be for Zava if I could get pinged. Like I don't know. through I'm the doors. Be oh, okay. This way. Okay. Zava's, Zava's standing there silently, ready to strike with his zuggle hammer. Yeah. Through the window and into anything on the other side that may be hostile. All right. Timothy's opening up that first door in front of him. And it's a bathroom. Yay! Great, no that's window? nothing. He just like peeps out. It's like restroom. No windows. No windows. No windows. Okay. Next one. Next door. <laughs> oh, shit. Yep. So this is a bedroom. Okay. Timothy walks in, and he sees the window, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and undoes the curtain and looks to Zaba through the window, and I think just waves. <laughs> Hey. hey, I was hiding here ready to strike if necessary. I guess I'll just come in now. Yeah, you can. All right. Yeah, watch Timothy. out. I'm going to break this window anyways. Oh, hold on. Let me back up. All right. Go for it. Yeah. Zaba just smashes the window and crawls through. Oh, it won't let me move myself through that. Thank you. All right. Stay close to everyone else. Timothy's going to walk down the other hallway then, because I don't think he really saw anything of note in that room when he looked it over. It's just a room. Fuck I it, might Zabo use one hand to flip the bed over real quick, make sure there isn't a treasure chest underneath. No, it's just a bunk bed. You find Smart five more bottles of old Woody. <coughs> oh my god, bribing tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Timothy's just going to open up that first door. Oh, I hate this. I don't like this. It's like settling in. It's creepy. More bedrooms. Yay. Timothy looks in this one. Anything of note, really? Nope. Just another bedroom. Cool. Okay. Uh, Left or right, guys? Left. Okay. Timothy goes to his left and opens up that door there. 
another set of bedrooms. Dude, this house is awesome. What the hell? people live here? Damn, not in this economy. Uh, anyways, <laughs> this I'm is the go. most successful farmer family, right? Because of, right? Because Damn, of right? this economy. Yeah, I know, right? Good for them. All right, Timothy opens up this last door and just like squints a little bit. He's like, I'm not gonna like this. I don't like this. Something tells me I'm not gonna like this. All right. Uh oh. We're gonna pause real quick because oh this is a the master bedroom. Okay. <clears throat> Do you notice that there is an enormous feather bed heaped with handmade quilts. There is a roaring fireplace opposite the bed, making the room quite hot. Oh, don't be more hearth hounds. Oh, don't be more hearth hounds. I don't want to deal with more dogs. I don't want Zaba to kill more dogs. As you walk in, you hear an elderly female voice croak out to you. Is someone? Hello? Uh, hi? I guess Timothy looks back to the party for a second, or at least looks back to see who he can see, and he's like, I'm walking in, and like it was whispers as he walks into the room. I like the idea Timothy can see nobody in the hallway. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, now, yeah, like he's like, just like, looks out, it's like, there's fucking no one there, fuck it, I'm just whispering, I'm going in. Yeah, the, the foot of the, the foot of the bed is just visible around the corner where you're, where you're at. Yeah. And beneath, the voice seems to come from beneath a the heap, the heaps of blankets that are on the bed. And here I can show you the, the token art for this little old lady. Looks pleasant. I don't like this and I don't trust her. <laughs> I don't have the... <laughs> as, so as you, as you round the corner... Oh, goodly granny is sick in bed. Children and bothering her would be very naughty. Come in, children. But only one at a time, so goodly granny can see you up close. Ma'am, there's a dead body downstairs. A dead body? What do you mean? <sighs> Timothy's like saying this out loud, by the way, so others know that he's talking to somebody right now. Hey, Timothy, maybe we should let Zaba help her. He's really good at carrying stuff. I, oh, I mean, you people. know what? That's a great idea. You know, we should get you out of this house, ma'am. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sick in bed. D I, need to, I, I need to take my medicine. And I need to stay in bed like the doctor said. Come closer, dear. Come closer. Let, let, let Granny. Let Granny see you. Ma'am, um, there's a dead bot. Zaba, uh, still saying this quietly. You got your sack? I always have my sack. Go, go help I Timothy. Like this. Yeah. Are you saying you want me to uh, put the old woman out of her misery? Or no, no, no. You can put her in the sack alive, and we'll bring her to the okay. doctor. If so she's force really her an into old lady. the sack and take her to the doctor. Yeah. I'm allowed to Make force me... her into the sack, right? Yes, correct. Timothy. Yeah. Timothy. Make me a secret perception check. Okay. Or, yeah. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. And after confirming all this, Saba will make his room to the his way to the room. Just Thank this you. once though, Zaba. Hey. I check in, you give me permission, I do it, I don't die, you know, you're the boss. Okay. Timothy well, is just come a closer. Little, come a little closer. Deary, I, 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 I need like to this. see. I, need, can I, don't. I, I, my, I don't see so well these days. Fuck, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Luna is saying this. Timothy is just, he still has his hand. I think it's like death gripping the wand at this point. He walks just a little bit closer. Okay, so as you walk closer. Yeah, I'll allow you to move Zob into the room when you figure time is appropriate. Yeah, so, well, so what, so give me, give me the ready. What's your, what's the trigger that you want to move in? Oh, Zob is just making his way there. 
as of talking to Syl. I imagine talking to Syl probably took 15, 20 seconds because they were being quiet. Right. And then he's just going to walk into the room and get ready to shove this old lady into his burlap sack. Okay. And I think we started as soon as we heard Timothy say there's someone here. And that she was sick. So, yeah, probably, uh, I don't know, <laughs> in not to speak in the game terms, but probably takes him three or four rounds to get to the room. I'm not sure how fast this old lady's seduction is happening. I don't well, like if, this. If it's someone who's <laughs> okay. sick, shouldn't I go in and take a look? Yeah, you can go in too, Vesuviak. So, so yeah, Zabo, if you, you, you come in, you come into the room and she says, no, dearie, I said one at a time. Dude, you'll get very sick. <laughs> well, uh, believe it or not, I don't get sick with the mortal diseases of your kind. I am, uh, resilient. And Timothy here is pretty well pickled, so don't worry about us. We're going to take you to get some help. This is not a great place to be. Oh, no, no. The doctor told me that I need to stay in bed so I can recuperate. Yeah, I'm going to put you in a special kind of bed and then take you to a new bed. <laughs> Vesuviak hears this and walks in and he's going to go, I... No, you are very naughty children, aren't you? I am, uh, you know... I am uh, not I, to, not listen, to age I, drop or anything, but I am like 42 centuries old after all of my cycles of being, you know, powerful arc demon, and then, uh, you know, Lemire briefly, and then I claw back up to powerful demon, and now I'm here, so... I think the is child. just going to gently put his hand on Zaba as he's going on and just move past him <laughs> and be like... Listen, I'm a cleric of Saren Ray. I can take a look and see if you are safe to move right now, but we really should not be in this house. And I want to try and medicine check her. I, oh. Hold on one second here. And at the mention of the, the, the name Saren Ray, you spot just for the briefest of seconds like a microsecond, there is a change in the goodly granny's visage. There's almost like the look of disdain and utter contempt when you mm. say the, the name Serenry. And it's just the briefest glimpse. And as you approach the, the goodly granny, all of a sudden, her her form drops and she no longer looks like the goodly granny. She now looks like this. <laughs> oh, awesome. And you can describe this to our audience. All right. I got this one. It, I've got a pretty quick and easy description. We're looking at the skinniest hag you've ever seen wielding a chain sickle but the chain sickle's got like a kind of green necrotic lightning going about it wearing very tattered burlap clothing kind of wild like grandma just woke up after a long nap on the couch and needs a diet coke and a coffee at the same time kind of hair yeah and she appears to be wearing a necklace that has fingers, fingers. and ears on it so that's always a really good sign. Yeah, small, small inger, fingers and ears. I was gonna say ingers. And oh, fears. that's an even that's a that's even better. Small ones. Not worried about Zabas anymore. A a anything else? Anybody wants to add? They don't look like they're about to give us a good time. They're not gonna give us Grandma's good soup like you would in a Zelda game. <laughs> I want potato soup now. So as she lashes out right at Vesuviak with that whip, that uh, that whip that Corey just described to you, 
it looks like it's made of thorny birch. Like it's, it's a, it's like made of birch, but like sharpened into thorns. Something strange happens, and both Zaba and Vesuviak, from where they, from where they, from where they are, they can see this happen, and it's almost as if Timothy is trying. No, Timothy is doing the "oh no, stop!" Yeah, kind of kind of deal, but it's almost like as if Timothy is reaching out to do the "oh no, stop" kind of deal. That all of a sudden. Like, he's moving in super speed, almost as if he's being aided by some kind of force. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, Timothy, take it away. Timothy steps in front of Vesuviak, and he feels something's going terribly wrong in his body, and he knows what's coming. And so as this thing's about to attack him, he looks back to Vesuviak and he just says, Gods, I hope you can keep a secret. And he takes this hit from the hag. So as Timothy takes this pretty bad, nasty hit, he gets knocked, I, I wouldn't say get knocked, back but more like he feels like he just got knocked out of his own body and he's going back into his memory something about this hit sends something flying back and he's going and thinking of memories that he's drowned in his bottle things that he's buried and he remembers the night he was born under a dark star and being surrounded by these very same hags different varieties different none of them looking the same, all of them with twisted faces, and he remembers feeling fear, genuine fear. He didn't know what was happening. He he screamed out for somebody, but of course, he was young. He didn't know what he was doing. And he felt something in his body overtaking him. And he then remembers someone coming to his aid an older man? No. That was his dad. His dad saved him from this group of hags and something was suppressed in Timothy. Something was put inside of Timothy and that something is helping him out right now as he stands over uh, and looks to Vesuviak. And Vesuviak, you notice Timothy's body, it like kind of went slump for a moment and then just readjusting of bones Ah, yes. It seems Timothy took a nasty blow. He's taking a little nap. Don't worry, though. I'm here to assist. How do you all do? Who are you? He didn't tell you. I go by many, many names in this mortal realm. Most know me as the Dark Star. Do not worry, though, Vesuvia. I know of you very well through Timothy's eyes. And I assure you, I'm not an enemy. For now, at least. <laughs> uh. Timothy Trace. <laughs> or not Timothy, Vesuviak is very nervous about this and I'll actually say he even raises his shield at this point. Oh, smart move. You don't want to be around for what happens next. It's going to be very, very, very bloody. And before we go any further, we are going to make sure that your party never ends because our party isn't and we'll fig we'll start this combat next episode because it might be a long one. Oh boy. Alrighty. Alright, take it easy, everybody. See ya. The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.